they arrived from different places throughout the world to stop Russian terror in Ukraine. They left their safe and peaceful daily life behind in order to protect the innocent. They can terminate their contracts at any moment, but most of them will fight till victory. They are doing the impossible on the battlefield, and they keep returning to the front line after having received heavy injuries. They are the salt of the earth of our civilization. They are soldiers of the International Legion for the Defense of Ukraine. I'm a soldier with a legion from the United States. A US Army veteran, a soldier in the International Legion for the Defense of Ukraine, participated in numerous missions in Afghanistan and Iraq. US military awards, Purple Heart, for having been wounded in action by an improvised explosive device. Army Commendation Medal, for running into the machine gun fire to suppress the enemy. Ukrainian military awards. Steel Cross for successful missions in the enemy's rear, for destroying the enemy and saving civilians. Now Michael is in recovery after being severely wounded in action. I was watching on TV um, all the bombings and innocent people being killed by the Russians. I see also seen women and young men who didn't know how to fight, given uh, they were being given AKs to fight. I thought to myself, you know, I'm a professional. And at the time, the president didn't open the door yet. So I kind of said like a little prayer. I was like, God, if there's a way for me to go help, I'll go help. And then President Zelensky, a few days later, said all foreign fighters, professionals are welcome. Then I decided to come because I was in Iraq and Afghanistan. I was trained for this already. So why not come and help? Understandably, Michael's close people were upset by his decision. They called me crazy and like, you're out of your mind. But I was like, they're like, you're one person. And I was like, well, if everybody said no, then nobody would come and help. Michael's first combat was in 2012 in Afghanistan. We were in a Afghani village, and there was an ambush in the next village set up for us. We had a, actually an IED bomb sniffing dog, but the dog stopped for rest. So the Taliban thought we spotted them. Michael was a mortem, a primary target for the enemy. But he reacted quickly. He survived and destroyed the enemy. I remember seeing this really tall Taliban, about 250 meters in front of me. Before I knew it, I seen him raise his weapon up, and there was contact from the other side. An RPG flew over us, and my muscle memory, my military training, just kicked in. So I shot the guy in front of me. You want to stop? And that was it, that was my first firefight. During his first combat in Ukraine, Michael's team managed to save a civilian woman and capture the Russians, who were shooting at the legionnaires. We went on a mission to, uh, to find a trail and pull security for Ukrainian forces uh, above enemy lines to push the line forward. We seen the enemy as we were moving, but we were not supposed to engage. After we set up security and the Ukrainians were dug in, we, we started leaving. We got engaged by the Russians. They started shooting at us. The legionnaires observed a figure of a person with a dog. At first, they thought them to be a part of a Russian recon team. We thought it was the Russians, but it wasn't. They were on the other side. So my commander actually saw it was an old woman, and the Russians were engaging us, and she was just walking. And he, he ran and grabbed her, and we, we exfilled her onto our vehicle. My commander, it was the Ukrainian commander. He pulled out a thermo to see where we were getting shot at from, a thermal vision. So he saw them and he told me and the other guy that had the grenade launcher to aim and fire, where to aim and fire. And him and another guy, they went up towards the Russians. The rapid attack left the enemy no chances. I didn't understand what he said, but I heard him screaming in uh, Ukrainian Russian for them to surrender or he's gonna have them killed. One guy surrendered, and the other guys, I think they fled. And we, we caught him. It was pretty cool, actually. 
Michael knows from his own experience how the Russians are different from the Taliban on the battlefield. The firepower, for one, Russians have a lot more firepower. And they're in uniform. The Taliban would fight and then blend in with the civilians. The Russians actually surrender, um, the Taliban won't. The Legionnaire considers tactics of the Russian occupational forces to be cowardly. Some of it's kind of cowardly because, well, to me, because whenever they, they leave and act, like exfil, when they lose them, they'll, they'll just start throwing landmines everywhere, you know? So, they will what? Landmines, personnel mines, and, and they'll kill anybody, like civilians and stuff like that, on a way out. So, I don't like that. They kill innocent people, and that's, that's not war tactics. Like, you're supposed to go after soldiers, you're not supposed to go after civilians. Now the Legionnaire is recovering after being severely wounded in a combat mission. My last combat, it was um, one of our teams and a Ukrainian team. We were supposed to go into a, a Russian occupied village and sneak into a house, collect intel and take out small Russian teams. And in the morning the Ukrainian army was going to take the village. Unfortunately, the enemy spotted the team and all hell broke loose. It looked like a scene from World War II. It was cold out, and when the rounds were landing, you could feel the heat of the blast. Decisions had to be made. But then there was a break in fire. Like, uh, so a break in fire is usually the enemy is, is like shifting, you know, like adjusting. And my commander yelled, get up, get up, let's move. The team was fighting their way out on the massive fire. I remember like kind of sensing it. I looked to my right and I seen a mortar round hit the house about 50 meters from us. And the house caught fire. And then about 50 meters past that, that house, there was another house and the door opened. I actually seen the man that shot me and I seen what he shot and I seen him shoot the grenade launcher. But instead, it was not even a second, I felt a punch, somebody punched me in the side. It didn't knock me down, but it made me wobble and I didn't feel the pain for like the first five seconds or so, but I remember I just took a deep breath and I was like, I'm hit, I'm hit. And then I fell to the ground and my commander ordered everybody to take cover, but two brave men, they screamed, we're not leaving him, we're staying with him. Despite being under heavy fire, Michael's teammates gave him first aid treatment. I almost thought of telling the guy next to me to shoot me. But I'm a Christian, so I was like, you know, I thought, don't do that, you can't do that, you know where you're gonna go if you do that. Michael survived medical evacuation from the enemy's rear. The Ukrainian surgeon, he gave me surgery, and the Ukrainian surgeons were really good. Michael is a truly religious person. He believes that his life has been saved due to professionalism of the people and the will of God. I was feeling about that mission, and I remember I prayed, because I, I always pray before I go out. I'm like, God, if my team, if, if some, they shoot something at us, let me take the full blow. I guess he heard because I took the full blow, you know? <laughs> Despite having been badly wounded, Michael does not regret joining the International Legion for the Defense of Ukraine. As I think of uh, how those guys saved my life, you know? Like the bravery of everybody and how we saved the lady from that mission. Like just one life, saving one life is worth it to me. Now he remains optimistic and feels grateful for being alive. Michael is not sure about going into combat again, but he definitely would like to continue his military service. Hopefully when I heal, maybe I want, kind of want to go into training people or maybe logistics because I, I love the fighting, but I don't think I could endure another painful experience like that again, you know? So I don't want to get shot again. <laughs> From his own experience, Michael knows the importance of military training. A military training background is really important because it's actually something called muscle memory. So you, you, you train to react, not think. You're thinking, but your body is just moving. He has a high opinion of the Legion's professionalism. Knowing that in my unit, all the guys are trained really well. So that, that brings me confidence. So I know if I'm looking in one direction, the other guys have my back. And the commander of my unit, he's a Ukrainian guy, but he's really good. He's like smart tactically 
and he knows what he's doing, so that helps too. But most of all, the Legionnaire admires courage and resilience of ordinary Ukrainians. I love Ukraine, actually. I like it a lot. And my favorite thing about the Ukrainians is their spirit not to back down and break, you know? The enemy is like huge, but they refuse to back down, and I love that.